Okay, welcome to the first instance of uh, NASA's video. This one is on navigational features that we've got in NASA 6.3. And what we're going to talk about here is just the features within the user interface that you're seeing right here in front of you. Uh, you'll first notice that we've got three frames. If you have used Outlook, Access, Excel, any of these Microsoft products, you're very familiar with using this product already. We've got three frames and the first frame on the left hand side where the mouse is is consider, is called the Explorer panel. Uh, you'll hear me use panel or frame or pane interchangeably. But this is the Explorer panel. <clears throat> to the right of it and on the top is the Editor panel. And then down below is the Message panel. So those are our three panels. We've got the Minimize, Maximize, and Close Out buttons that are very commonly used on all Microsoft products. Uh, you'll also notice that we've got the buttons that allow you to minimize and to maximize or you can use your mouse hover over the lines, the frame lines and you can click and you can drag. So you've got all of that navigational features that you're commonly used to your, uh, in other products. It's the same thing here. Uh, the Explorer panel it contains all the objects that we explore in NASA's or that we use for navigational features. The first one is queries. The next one will be tables. Following that is the reports, the interpretations, calculations and validations, and then the exports. I'm going to come back up here to queries and I'm going to hover my mouse over the blue bar with the dots. You'll notice it turns into a double arrow. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this down and what happens is all of those object bands become buttons now and they are available to me down here. So I can click on the T's and go to the tables, R, go to the reports, I, go to the interpretations and so on and so forth. So that's the way we're set up right now on the uh, three different frames along with the three different frames what the Explorer panel contains. Okay, let's talk about a few of the other features that we've got in here. Uh, the way the queries are and the reports are set up, they're set up by sites. And the sites are based off the regional offices and also off the national office. So when you open up a particular query, you can he see all of the queries that are available. Well, I can't see the name, so how can I... Uh, look at the complete name. I can hover over the frame bar, click, drag, and I can bring it over so that I can read the entire names. I can also come over here to reports and you'll notice the same thing. Under the reports we've got each site and under each site we've got the list of the various reports. You'll notice that these are all thumbs up. I can come over here and click on this view ready to use only button, remove that check mark, and now I see all of those that are not ready for use. Well, why would you have reports and queries that are ready for use or not ready for use? Mainly, maybe working on them or they may be reports or queries that are not pertinent to everyone's use. And so we hide them. That's all we're doing. And if you are working on them and you want to find that report quickly, <clears throat> you can click on View Checked Out Only and that will also bring up just those lists that are checked out. I'm not, I'll discuss more about that later. So you've got your queries, your tables, your reports, your interpretations, calculations, validations, and then your exports. You've got your explorer panel, you've got your editor panel, and you got your message panel. Now let's go from there into the menu options and we'll cover the menu options real quick. Under the NASA's menu option, you've got Clear Selected Set. And what the Clear Selected Set allows, and you'll notice that every time you mouse over every one of these, you've got not only the toolbar icon, the menu name or uh, subject title, but you also have a mouse over that explains to you what that is. Clear the subset of your data that you have selected for viewing or running. Now. Selected set. Let's explain what a selected set is. A selected set is the information contained in the editor panel. NASA's is a client server application. Being an, a, a client server application, the client or your 
computer runs a piece of software and it has a local database and that local database is a SQL Server Express database that was loaded on your system. It mimics the same database that's up on uh, Kansas City National Server and in doing so you have to run a query on the National Server and you run that query and download data and, in, and install it in your local database and then from your local database you run a query against your local database in order to retrieve and filter out the information that you want to put into your selected set or the editor grid and that selected set is something that you're going to be reviewing or working on so that's the reason why you have to run a query against the national database in order to grab data put it in your local database and then run it against your local database to bring it into your selected set. Now every time you run a query against your local database and populate your selected set you're appending that selected set and in order to clear that selected set you have to go to the NASA's menu or the toolbar and choose the broom or clear the selected set and that cleans out the selected set. It doesn't remove it from your local database it just removes it from your selected set, cleans it out so that you can install or re reload new information. Okay, the next one is set up local database. Now, how do I know what's inside my local database? Well, when I run a national query and it retrieves results, it opens up this set up local database to tell me what I have re uh, retrieved from the national uh, server if I want to go back and look and see what did I install what have I got installed in my local database I can click on this and what will happen is it'll come and open up and I'm going to minimize my explorer panel and it will then allow you to look at the information that is contained within your local database and as you can see I have no information in my local database because I have not run a query to load any information we can also refresh the local database and what the refresh does is NASIS is a, a uh, database system that is designed for sharing and everyone in your office can have the same set of information in their local databases on their computers. NASIS is a read-only database and you have to check out that information that you want to edit and then once you've checked it out it goes in place as a lock at the national level and no one can edit that data check that data out to edit it until you're done with it so if I'm in my office and I've checked out a, a, uh, a component record and uh, checked out a data map unit record and I'm editing a component I can edit that component and then I can upload those changes when I'm completed up to the national database and then once it's up in the national database I can then check in my edits and then the lock is removed well if there's two other people in my office in order for them to get the edits that I made I come in here and I click on a refresh local database and those records that I edited will if they're in their local database they will then come down and uh, take my edits from the national database and put them into their local databases and that is how you keep the databases in sync within your office and that's the reason why we tell everybody the first two things that you do uh, pardon me the first thing you do in the morning is refresh your local database because that way anything that's in the local database that needs to be refreshed will be updated and then and the at the end of the day the last thing you do is you upload all changes to the national database and the final thing you do before closing NASA's is you check in all your data and you have to check in all your data because NASA's works uh, basically on a multi-user single computer system and that means that more people more than one person could be using that PC to be editing NASA's data but if you're using it and you and another uh, colleague are sharing a computer and you come in here and you edit data on a Friday and then you get up and you've you leave for the weekend and you have data checked out and you haven't uploaded your data or anything you just haven't checked out your checked your data back in what happens is on Monday when your colleague comes in and sits down at the computer and wants to start editing the data they're locked out of that database because you have data checked out 
you have to check in your database every night so that if anybody needs to use your computer for NASA's work they have the ability to edit and so um, first thing in the morning you do you refresh your local database the very last thing you do at the end of the day you check in all your edits so discard all edits what this does is allow you to discard anything back to it rolls your database back to the last time you uploaded your database so when you've uploaded your information up to the NASA's uh, server up in Kansas City and you've continued making edits and you think you know this is not what I wanted to do I want to roll this back my oops button I can click on my oops button and what ends up happening is it rolls it back to the last save to the uh, up, uh, national database you can also clear your local database I'm done I don't need to have anything else in my local database I'm I'm ready to requery it with a different set of data you can then come in here and clear your local database and it removes all the information out of your database doesn't delete it from the national server just removes it from your local database and then you're ready to, to download a new set of data from uh, the server you also have preparing for disconnected editing and what this allows you to do is those of you who would like to take your computer tablet whatever you're running NASA's on to the compu uh, to the field in order to enter your data while you're in the field or even edit your data while you're out in the field you can prepare for disconnected editing and what it does is it signals to the national server that uh, it's going to download a set of record IDs for your computer to be able to continue editing offline because keep in mind you have to be online to edit data so if you're doing uh, field editing you want you'll want to prepare for disconnected editing the next three messages are identical to the three messages that are in the message uh, panel view the status messages view upload conflicts view validation results and those are the three tabs that are down at the bottom of the status messages the next four choices are managing data that's that is personal to you in using NASA's first one is your user profile we'll go into more detail on that in the next video the next one is managing your table layouts we'll uh, explain more about that but that allows you to um, basically set the way the columns look within your particular system hiding columns and so forth the next one is managing table layout uh, pardon me managing your choice list similar to pet on pc you can go in there and turn on and turn off fields uh, domain fields, choice list fields that you want to appear in your various choice lists and you can share that information with the other people in your office and then managing the toolbars, there's four toolbars you can manage those toolbars uh, using that uh, menu option the last three options under the NASIS is the import pedons from the pedon PC database import the GPS site data uh, if you're using the GPS you can download the uh, the uh, waypoints and import those into uh, NASA's as your sites and then the last one is importing your Excel files and we have a variety of Excel files from Pedon to uh, vegetation to um, wetland um, hydric soils we have a v quite a variety of Excel spreadsheets that can be imported into NASA's and then of course your last one is exit now then, you'll notice that uh, the Explorer menu right now says Reports Explorer and it will identify, the menu name will be identified based on whatever is highlighted in the uh, Explorer. If I come over here and click on Queries, you'll notice that my name now changes to Queries Explorer. And if I just click on Tables, here's Tables in my band and then also here's Tables on my menu. So I've got Tables Explorer so that's the way that works and we'll go into more detail on that when we actually talk about the variety of things to do in here but in essence you can see that you can add a new query you can open a query you can check out a query remember you have to check out data in order to edit the data same thing with reports same thing with queries you have to check them out in order to edit them you can also mark them for deletion if you didn't mean to delete it you can remove that deletion mark you only delete stuff when you save up to the local uh, up to the national database and that's when it gets deleted 
you can discard your changes you can check in your data and you can find out who has the data checked out by checking the uh, view checkout status you also have the capability of uh, as I said yeah first thing you have to do is run it against run a query against the national database in order to retrieve information from there to populate your local database and then you have to run against the local database in order to bring into your uh, uh, editor grid or editor panel that selected set of information that you filtered to bring in for editing. We have a view information and then we also can add a query to, a fa to our favorites list and we can also remove it from our favorites list. And I didn't, I kind of glossed over that, but you have the capability of adding a uh, set of uh, queries and reports to a favorites uh, subfolder folder pardon me uh, the editor grid of uh, editor menu of course is uh, dimmed right now because there's nothing in my editor and we'll talk more about that when we get into start editing data and then the last thing is the help and here is where you go in for your all your online documentation if you need to send an uh, error uh, if there's an error that occurs and you want to send a message to the hotline staff this is where you go and then you can also find out specifically what version of NASAS and what database uh, model you're running. So that gives you a basic synopsis of the navigational features. Most of you are familiar with this if you've used any Microsoft product. We have the menus, we have the toolbars which we'll go into more detail later. Uh, there's a NASAS toolbar, there is an explorer toolbar, there'll be an editor toolbar, and there'll be a table toolbar. We also have the messenger toolbar over here on the right hand side. We have objects in the Explorer panel. We have the queries. We have our tables. We have our reports. We have our interpretations, calculations, and validations, and our exports. So that gives you a brief rundown of the navigational features. That completes this particular video. And then the next video, we'll move on to more uh, other steps of NASA's. Thank you.